Good afternoon. In the previous lesson, we talked about communication and the different types of communication. In today's lecture, we will be talking about the channels of communication and a detail about the types of communication. So let us just recap about what we studied in the previous lecture. We talked about communication. Now what is communication? Communication is the exchange of thoughts, ideas, opinions and feelings. In short, you can say that it is a two-way process wherein whatever you are saying, whatever you are communicating to others is understood in the right context and reciprocated in a manner that gives a reason or that gives a meaning to the complete process of communication. Now, in this we talked about the certain principles of communication. Let us just have a very quick recap of that. We said that the first principle of communication is communication is irreversible. That is whatever you have said, whatever you have said to the other party, it cannot be taken back. So, you need to be very very clear about the process of communication, about what you are communicating the other person because the words are like arrows and once it has gone it will not come back. So that is what we talked in the previous lesson. We also talked about the other principle of, com principle of communication and we said that communication is not a panacea. By panacea we mean that it is not a one shot remedy that will cure all the diseases or that will cure all the mishaps. Sometimes you may feel that you have communicated and yet you have not received the best results. That means you have not received the results as per your expectations. Now it depends upon certain factors and that we are going to talk about when we talk about the barriers to the process of communication. But still it depends upon the physical environment, it depends upon the context. If Have you understood the context properly or not? It depends upon what you have communicated and how that other person has taken that communication. Now all these things, they play a major role when you are communicating to other person. We also talked about the different aspects of communication wherein we said that the communication is a two-way process. That means unless you say something to the other person, the process of communication will not take place. It's a two-way process wherein you speak something that and the other person also speaks something and then the process of communication starts. But at the same time, communication is unavoidable. Now what does that, what does that mean? Communication is unavoidable. It means that even if you are not speaking, even if you are not talking, even if you are not speaking a single word to the other person, yet the process of communication is going on. That is, you communicate through your body, you communicate through your gestures, you communicate through your eyeball movements, through your hand movements and so many other factors that give the whole thing to the process of communication. Now, in that process, we have also taught that 55% is body language out of the process of communication or in communication. 55% is body language, 38% intonations. Intonations means the rise and fall in the language, the low, high and the low pitch that we have while we are communicating to the persons and only 7% words. So we can understand that communication plays a major role and in this body language particularly is very very important. How you are speaking to the other person would play a secondary role but primary role is played by your body that is how is your body communicating to the other person like when you are talking to the other person are you making faces? Are you uh, taking uh, it very lightly or are you giving such kind of expression that the other person gets an idea that you are not interested in the process of communication. Now all these things can be conveyed through your body language. So you really need to take care of your body. 
body movements especially when you are talking to the persons or when you are even giving a presentation for that matter today we are going to talk upon the channels of communication now let us first talk about what do we mean by channel see children channel channel it is the medium used to convey our message the channel should be appropriate for the message for example if you want to communicate something to your boss you need to decide which channel you should choose let us take an example if, if you want to talk about your promotion or about your increment with the boss you need to talk think about a proper channel you should think that whether it would be appropriate to write an email to the boss or whether it would be appropriate to have a face to face communication these all things should be decided before you choose a channel let us take another example supposing you have to invite somebody to the party who are organizing a party at your place and you are thinking to invite somebody now again the channel plays a major role you need to take a call that whether you are going to text message to the person and invite him or her to the party or whether you should send an email or whether you should call him on the phone now it all depends upon the type of relationship you are having with the other person you need to take care of the relationship which you are having with the other person into care when you are choosing an appropriate channel certainly that would vary at times even a text message to a person is good enough and at times you need to rack your brains and write a good email in order to establish or a rapport or in order to give meaning to what you are saying so the channel is very very important and as we said it is the medium used to convey the message channel should be appropriate for the message and it should help the message make more clear whatever medium you are using it should be a medium that makes your communication clear definitely clarity plays a major role if you go back to the previous lecture i told you that the communication should not only be clear but it should be an effective communication and in order to have an effective communication you need to take care of the medium of communication wherein you decide what you are going to choose as a medium to communicate to the other person let us now move ahead see these are some things that we have noted that your channel could be any it could be your memo it could be your report it could even be a whisper something sometimes you are talking to your colleague or to your peer and you don't want that the other person should listen to that so it could be even a whisper speaking very slowly so that you are conveying only to that person and it is not heard by other persons so how does the process of communication take place a sender first encodes the message and that message is sent via channel to the receiver and that received message is then encoded or decoded by the person by the person who is who has received the message and then the person gives the feedback to the sender if you are going to discuss this process in detail in the next slides to come or as we move ahead but these are the examples which we have which i have taken to make it clear that the channels could be a memo it could be a report it could be phone it could be email or it could be even a presentation now in the verbal channel coming I mean, there are verbal communication channels there are written communication channels and there are non verbal channel also we are talking of the formal communication right now so in this all these three channels they play a very very major role again verbal channel is the channel 
that you are having in which you are speaking verbally. Verbal, the name itself implies that when you are speaking something, you are communicating verbally. So in that, it includes face-to-face -face meetings. As you can see over there, face-to-face -face meetings, it could be a telephonic conversation. Even then you are speaking. So a telephonic conversation is also included in the channel of verbal communication. Video conferencing. This has become very common these days that when uh, there, you are not available or, or there are many persons who need to speak to you or you want to speak to many persons at a time and you, it is not possible for you to uh, because of the distant places, because of the different uh, conditions and you are not able to meet face to face. In that case it is possible to get connected through video conferencing. And I know that all of you must be aware of how a video conferences take, conferencing takes place. There are several tools available these days to make video conferencing available. It can be there on the web, it could be there on Skype and so many other devices are there through which you can communicate to the other persons at a time. And these all channels, they come under verbal communication channel. The next is written communication channels. Now whenever you are communicating not by speaking but you are writing in order to communicate. So that could be the letters, that could be emails, memos and reports. So you can communicate through these and so many other mediums also. And last but not the least the non-verbal channel. That is, that could be visible only when you are communicating verbally, when you are having a face-to-face -face conversation or when you are on a video conferencing, even on telephone. That is, we talked about the non-verbal channel or we talked about non-verbal communication. We said that it is 38% intonation. So when you are talking to somebody over phone, your tone would communicate to that person what you imply through your words. If your tone is a serious one, you are serious about the work. If your tone is little low or it's little hanky-panky, you are not very serious about the work, that thing would also be communicated to the other person through your tone. So you have to decide the channel very, very carefully as we have been telling in the previous slide also. We have been talking about it. So you need to take care of the channel very, very carefully. And always remember that the non-verbal element would be there when you are having the verbal communication. In written communication, since you are not visible, you are not into the scene or if the person cannot see you, in that case, the non-verbal channel will not be there. There are different types of communication. When we talk of communication, there are different types of communication in the formal setup. First is downward communication as you can see. Next is upward communication and the third is the lateral or horizontal communication. Now let us discuss what does that mean. Downward communication, the communication that is coming from the higher authorities to the persons who are lower in hierarchy, that is said to be downward communication. This kind of communication is highly directive because it is used to assign duties, it is used to give instructions, it is used to give some kind of work to the subordinates. So the type of communication that will include, it would be highly directive because in this the directions are being given from the boss to the subordinates. Now upward communication, again upward communication means that when the, when the employees, the persons who are lower in hierarchy, they give feedback to the boss or they report to their boss or they inform their, uh, their 
process about the progress or what even if they are facing any kind of problem so when they are communicating to them it is upward communication downward when the bosses are communicating to the employees to the persons who are lower in hierarchy that is downward communication upward communication when the persons who are lower in hierarchy they are communicating to their bosses to speak about their problems or to tell about the progress of an event or to tell about what has been happening for that matter these all communication would be there in upward communication lateral or horizontal communication it is the type of communication that occurs between colleagues that is people who are there on the same rank between the peer group people who are there at the same level to share their feelings it is used to for the proper coordination so persons who are there at the same rank the communication that takes place between them is said to be lateral communication or horizontal communication there is another type kind of communication children this is what we have talked about formal communication that is in a formal setting this type of communication takes place but there is also a communication that takes place even in the formal settings and that is said to be informal communication or the great wine communication now this kind of communication children is very very dangerous because it is it leads to gossips and as the name indicates great wine communication it you have seen you must have seen the great wine the wine on which the grapes grow it goes haphazardly it can crop up from anywhere so similarly this kind of communication can crop up from anywhere it has got no roots and they turn into gossips they turn into rumors and this kind of communication is not appreciated in a formal setup so please be aware that when you are into a formal setting when you join your office when you join a business do not give importance to grapevine communication that is the gossips that are going on or that are the rumors that are taking place you cannot stop them it is for sure that you cannot stop this kind of communication but you can surely make yourself apart from this by not being a party to all these kind of communication take care that you mind your own business take care of what is being said to you do the work properly and do not indulge yourself in the great point communication or the informal communication that takes place at the offices or that takes place at the workplace everywhere it is obvious that this kind of communication would be there but you need to take a call you need to keep yourself apart from such kind of communication because it will harm your reputation if somebody comes to know that you are a party to all the gossips that are happening or if you are a party to whatever is happening whatever rumors are being spreading think what a disaster you would have created for yourself so the best part to avoid this thing is to keep yourself apart from such kind of communication that is taking place and to maintain your reputation there are certain components of communication when we were talking about communication i told you that we will be talking about it, the process of communication in detail the sender there is a sender that is from who communicates that is a person who transmits the message the person who receives the message is said to be a receiver and the channel is the transmission that, that takes place that is the medium that you have chosen is the channel the language used to convey the message is called as medium and the response that the receiver gives is the feedback or the response now let us see how it works so this is the communication process wherein you can see that there is a sender who encodes the message that is frames the message. 
message and he or she then chooses a channel through which that message is sent to the receiver. Now the receiver receives the message, he or she decodes that message and that feedback is then given to the source. Source means the sender who has initially formulated the message or who has initially sent the message. Now feedback plays a very very important role. At times you need to take care of the feedback. In organizations feedback is very very important. What has been encoded and what has been received it plays a major major role. So you need to take care that when you are framing the message you are making it very very clear. Clarity and brevity go hand in hand. That is your message should be clear at the same time it should be brief. Brief it means to the point. Only then it would be understood by the other party or it would be decoded by the receiver in a proper manner or in a proper sense. So that the person when he gives the feedback it is the correct feedback that he receives. At the same time you need to take care of the context as well. The context means that to whom you are speaking, how, what is this, what are the circumstances under which you are framing the message. Are you doing it in the right context? Let us just have an example children that will make things clear. Children, in our Indian system, hospitality is considered to be a very, very important part. Now, whenever there are guests at your place and you serve something to them, they will always say, no, no, we don't want, this is enough. So, you can see over there that the person's hands, they are open and the eyes of that person is on the dish. So, you can understand, you have to then understand through the context and the subtext that is there that he wants but since he is the guest, he cannot say that yes, I want more or I would like to have this. There are people who may say that but generally it is our culture that we don't ask for things. So, you need to understand the context and you need to then act accordingly. At times, you don't have to go by the words very strictly. You need to understand the context of it. And so, when the guest is there, you need to be very hospitable and when they say that, no, no, it's enough, we are not uh, very hungry or we don't want to have it, you need to understand their body language, you need to understand the context and then make a service accordingly. Similarly, when you are talking to somebody or when you are communicating to your colleagues, your bosses or for that matter any other person, you need to understand the context of it and then frame your message and communicate it accordingly so that the person understands it and gives you the feedback in the right manner. Only then the process of communication could be said to be a good one. See, these are the five ways we, were talk we have talked about the communication process. We have talked about the verbal communication. We have also talked about the non-verbal communication. But let us now talk about written communication. In written communication, there are certain things that should be taken care in order to make your written communication a good one. And these are the ways by which you can make your written communication much more effective. Now the first thing in that goes is picture the receiver in mind before you begin to write. Before you start writing, please picture the receiver in the mind. That means to whom you are writing? Is it a matter that you are writing to your boss? Is it a matter you are writing to your friend? Is it a matter that you are writing to your colleague? So picture that person and that will give you an idea of what kind of language you should use while you are framing your content. Then choose simple words. So it is always better to choose simple words that everybody can understand. For example, choosing a word like automobile 
may not be understood by the other person. So it is better if you say it means car. Instead of using the word automobile, you can use the word car. When you are framing your message, whatever you are writing, the clarity should be there and with the same at the same time you should be polite. That means you should use such words that make your message a polite one. You should be courtesy. As is well said, courtesy is the oil that reduces friction. Even if there is some kind of friction between two persons and the other person party uses the words that are very courteous, that are very polite, it will reduce the friction or it will reduce the conflict. So, you should be very clear about your message and you should write in a manner that conveys your etiquette or your courtesy. Make your message direct. Make it very direct. Remove the words that are redundant. Instead of making it too long, do not frame too long sentences because you are likely to make errors into that if you keep your sentences too long. So try that you make it clear by making it short. There is one example children I have taken. Having thus explored our first option, I would now like to begin to explore the second option that may be open to us. No, this is a sentence that is very long. You can see and unnecessarily the words have been used. Now it, is, it becomes very redundant. And the message is also not very clear. So instead of this, if you write, after considering option 1, I would like to look at option 2. Now the meaning is clear, you are brief, you are to the point and definitely you are very very clear. Now choose strong active verbs instead of writing. It would seem to me that we might choose I suggest. Meaning is clear and you are showing, you are giving importance to action words. That is you are showing that you have already investigated and after the investigation you are giving your suggestions in this manner. So you should write I suggest instead of writing in the manner it would seem to me that we might do it in this manner or that manner. Simple. Make it simple and write I suggest. And remember concise writing equals to effective communication. In order to be effective in your communication you need to be concise. You need to pay attention to the matter that you are choosing. Now that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed today's lecture. I hope you have understood what we meant by channel, what is meant by different types of communication and what all things you should take care when you are writing a message or when you are participating in written communication. If there is something that you have not understood, please let me know.